Kings chapter 4. Verses 6 and 7. Galatians chapter 4. Verses 6 and 7. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. That's the identification mark of those who are heirs of God. The identification mark of the joint heirs with Christ. Now, we we'll want you to know whether you are there or not. So you, can, so you don't go to the court of heaven claiming what does not belong to you. You want to know whether this identifies you or not. If it identifies you, then you are able to go with courage, with conviction, with confidence, with faith, with trust, believing that whatever you are claiming of that inheritance is yours. And therefore, it will be easy for you to just say, Father, I come to claim my inheritance. Who are these people of the right to come to the Heavenly Father and to come with courage, with confidence, with conviction, with trust, with faith, and they're able to say, Father, this is mine. Who are they? Look at them in verse 6. And because he has sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart. The spirit of his son into your hearts. Who then are these joint heirs? Identify them. They are the people that have the spirit of Christ in them. The spirit of Christ. The Father has sent the spirit of his Son into your heart. Come to Romans chapter 8. In Romans chapter 8, the spirit of his Son, verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh. But in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man does not have the spirit of Christ, what's the spirit of Christ? The spirit of love. If any man does not have that spirit of love, the spirit of Christ is none of his. What's the spirit of Christ? The spirit of joy. Joy in doing the will of the Father. Joy every time as we think of who we are. The joy of the Lord becoming our strength. What's the spirit of Christ? Is the spirit of peace. And if any man does not have the spirit of Christ, is none of his. And because we are sons, he has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. What's the spirit of Christ? Is the spirit of patience, the spirit of long suffering, the spirit of long endurance, the spirit of long waiting, 
the spirit of patience that we're not in a hurry to push another one down because he's standing in my way I'm in a hurry to get to that position and he is standing in my way and then we push him down that's not the spirit of Christ because we are sons he has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts whereby we cry Abba Father what's the spirit of Christ is the spirit of gentleness the spirit of gentleness a gentle lifestyle a gentle disposition a gentle conduct not an aggressive personality not a wicked voice trust and grief personality is the spirit of gentleness what's the spirit of christ is the spirit of meekness and because we're sons these are the joint heirs because we're sons of god he the heavenly father has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts not into our head is not just the knowledge into our hearts and our emotion reflects what's in our heart the spirit of christ is the spirit of fidelity the spirit of faithfulness and is the spirit of temperance self-control and it says ye are not in the flesh if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man does not have the Spirit of Christ, is none of his. Who then are the joint heirs with Christ? They are the people that are sons of God. And those sons of God are the people that have the Spirit of Christ in them sons of God sons of God in 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 reading from verse 14 be ye not unequally yoked together with some believers these are the sons of God for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what, with, and what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Belial? And what, or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them. These are the sons of God. I will walk in them. These are the sons of God. I will be their God. And they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them. The sons of God are separated people. Wherefore come out from among them. The sons of God are the people who have come out of all the dirty, dirty things in the world. The sons of God are those who have responded to this call. The call to salvation. The call to separation. The call to saintliness saintly life wherefore come out from among them and you are not like you know the rest of the world they are in darkness you are in the light they are wicked but you are kind they are evil but you are good 
they follow the pollutions and the dirty, dangerous, destructive things of the world, but you are in the light and goodness and godliness. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Who are the joint heirs with Christ? They are the people who have responded to this call of God. Touch not the unclean thing. A lot of things are unclean. They'll make you unclean. The pornography. The alcohol. The secrets. The evil things. The adultery, the fornication, touch not the unclean thing, the stolen money, the bribes, touch not the unclean thing. Don't even touch it. They've taken it from others and they want to share it with you. Don't even touch it. Be a son. A son of God, touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. We know then that those who are the joint heirs with Christ, they are the people who have responded to the call of God, come out from among them, and be separate, says the Lord. Let your life identify you, that you have the grace of God, that you have the Spirit of Christ, that you have the transformation that comes to a new creature in Christ. Let your life mark you out, that now you are one of the sons of God, one of the children of God, God, and then you become a joint heir with Christ. If you come back to Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 16, Romans chapter 8, verse 16, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, the children of God, the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If we're children, then we're heirs of God. Who are the children? In Galatians chapter 3, Galatians chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ. You see that? Children of God. These are the identified joint heirs. Those who have put their faith in Christ. And they believe that Christ died for them on the cross of Calvary. And that the blood of Jesus that was shed, it was in particular for them. And that blood of Christ shed on the cross has cleansed their sins away. These are the children of God and their faith. Faith in the Lord. In First John chapter 3. First John chapter 3, the children of God are the heirs of God. The children of God are joint heirs of Christ. Who are these children of God? How do we know them? First John chapter 3, from verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. Think about this. He that committed sin is of the devil. Sin is not just an idea you have in your head. Sin is not just an opinion that you hold. 
Sin is not just what the church says. Don't do this, don't do that. Sin is what the Bible tells us, makes us children of the devil. And it mentions fornication, sin. It mentions adultery, sin. It mentions backbiting, a sin. It mentions murder, abortion, a sin. It mentions stealing, mentions covetousness, a sin. And it says in that verse 8, First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, these are the children of God. How does somebody become a child? A family is born into that family. How does somebody become a child of God? He is born into the family of God. And he that is born, whosoever is born of God, commit, does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born born of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. This is how we know the children of God. The joint heirs with Christ. In this, in this matter of sinning not. In this matter of being made free from sin. In this matter of freedom from fornication, freedom from adultery, and freedom from slander and backbiting, and freedom from covetousness and stealing, and freedom from whatever the Bible labels as sin. In this matter of freedom from sin are the children of God manifest. And the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now we have identified who the heirs are, who the joint heirs are. Number one, they are the sons of God. Number two, they are the children of God. Now, what's the implication? Point number two, the implication of joint heirship. The implication of joint heirship. We come back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If we're children, then we're heirs. We're heirs of God. And we're joint heirs with Christ. What's the implication of that? What's the result of that? What's the benefit of that? That you are now joint heirs with Christ. Uh, let's look at that, the implication of being a joint heir in First Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, verse 7. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together, heirs together, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not 
hindered. What's the implication of being a joint heir with Christ? Simply, it means heirs together. Heirs together. We have Christ, we have the Christian, and they inherit together. We have the Son of God, and we have the sons of God, and they inherit together. We have thy holy child, Jesus, and we have the children of God, and their heirs together of the riches of God, of the resources of God, of the blessings from above, heirs together. That's the implication of being joint heirs. Hebrews chapter 11, joint heirs. Hebrews chapter 11, reading from verse 8. Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after inherit, receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. Abraham was called to receive an inheritance. And then we're told he went out. He didn't know the extent of the inheritance. He didn't know how large, how big, how great, 